we are continuing where we left off last week, building our arcade game controller here for my daughter's birthday, your little space command center. Uh, and uh, here we have the joystick with the knob taken off, which would go right here. And uh, the connection is very close to this hole right here. And drop something. <sighs> If that's a problem, I can always cut off one of these corners. I did plug this into a computer. I noticed this when I first bought them. So this is an arcade style controller, which means it's not uh, pressure sensitive. Basically, there's four connections in here, up, down, left, and right. So it doesn't matter how hard or how soft you press it, it's either on or off. By default, there are two axes on this. Now, from a programming, from a software standpoint, you normally have axis 0, 1, 2, and 3, normally how they're labeled. This controller, left and right, is axes 0, and up and down is axes 2, or axis 2, however you say it. Um, skipping 1, which is normally up and down or front and back. Uh, so, basically, most games I'm going to use this on are probably going to have to be reprogrammed, which, if it's any type of emulator for an arcade or Nintendo or something, it doesn't matter because you're going to program it anyway. Um, so, I am going to put it in this way, so this is left and right because that's the standard default, and this is up and down. Uh, and so I said I might have to cut off one of these corners, but there's plenty of screw holes here that I can use a Dremel tool to cut off one of those corners and be fine. But today, what we're going to be working on is making the bottom box that's going to contain all our components, our, all our electronics. So as I've mentioned in the previous video, uh, with the game controller in there, the joystick is going to be our, our deepest piece. It's about an inch and a half deep. So I'm going to make our bottom box two inches, which this is a scrap piece of wood I have from another project, which actually is um, two inches already. So as I can see, if I can put this here, it actually is perfect in height and actually almost in length except for we're going to need it shorter on this side. So basically I'm going to cut a piece of wood two inches deep that goes along this way, this way, this way, and this way, and then later on I'll create a bottom probably with hinges and then of course we'll screw in all our components. So let's see how far we get today. So I also like to mention, so this, uh, the, the top of my game controller is a nicer piece of wood that I got. Uh, actually, I bought it from uh, Home Depot at a discounted rate because it was their, their scrap pile. Uh, and this is actually left over from a, a, other projects. I actually used that, piece, those, that nice wood in a lot of different projects, and that's the last little piece of it. It worked out perfect for this project. The bottom half, I'm using uh, this type of wood, which is a very cheap type of wood. It's fence post uh, from, from, again, from Home Depot. It's a little over a dollar for a five foot piece that's four inches wide. So uh, I use this for a lot of projects. It's a very rough wood, it takes a lot of sanding, but very cheap and great for little projects like this. So we should be able to box this whole thing in with half one of those, so it's 50 cents worth. This one, it, this piece is a little bit too wide, but once it's all nailed down, I'll use a sander, sand that down, and it should be all smooth. So now I need to start thinking about making a hole for our USB cable that's going to go to our board. 
It's got a little connector, so I gotta make the hole big enough for this connector. It also has a little rubber stopper here. So at first glance, you notice that our little connector's wider than our rubber stopper, but that's okay because I can put the wires down and squeeze it through the hole. So I just need to make it big enough for the, this connection to fit through the hole that way. At this point, I think a uh, half inch is way too big. A quarter inch is just about the same diameter as our wire. So if I go with a quarter inch drill bit and just wear it down so there's a little bigger of a hole, I think that should work out well. So that's what I'm gonna go with first because I'd much rather be too small than too big and waste a piece of wood. Well, it is not the prettiest hole in the world, but it is big enough for my connector to fit through and for the plug to fit into. A little hot glue when I'm all done will help hold that in place. And now, for a fun part, to break out the brad nailer. So I'm gonna use uh, one inch nails to nail all this together. Uh, if you don't have a nail gun, obviously you can use regular nails or screws or even glue in many cases. I'm using this nail gun because, uh, again, this is being given to a four-year-old who's probably going to be pretty rough with it, so I want to make sure it's as sturdy as can be. I actually just thought I probably should uh, sand down some of these pieces before nailing them together. It'll be easy. Of course, I'll give it a, a once-over in the very end, but uh, to get these rough sides, it's going to be easier before they're shaped like a box. guidelines trying to eyeball where the wood is to nail because it's hard to tell when I'm nailing down where this piece of wood is and so I knew anytime I do this I'm going to have some nails that miss so all I'm going to do is I'm going to go in there with a Dremel tool and just cut those right off and make them smooth so they're on the inside so it doesn't make a difference you're not going to see them but I don't want any sharp things sticking out As long as I have the Dremel tool out, I'm going to try to cut this corner off of the joystick plate since that will overlap with one of our buttons. And we have the other holes here to screw it down. With. This is still very hot. There we go. Just cut that off. And now. It's not in the way of that button. Perfect. Thumbs up. Well, we're coming along pretty good. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to sand down any rough edges, uh, make any, all these edges kind of beveled with the sander. Uh, then I'm going to use some compressed air to clean this all out so that I can paint it. Probably use compressed air to clean off the sawdust in my shop here and off my camera, which is kind of sawdusty right now. Uh, and then we'll see how that uh, paint I bought came out. That's supposed to be a metallic, shiny look to it. So here we go. I 
just remembered I wanted to put one of these LED matrix into the box. So uh, before I paint it, I'm going to try to cut the hole for that and hopefully not mess up this entire project that I've worked so hard on. Here we go. So since I've already put the, the walls on this, it's going to be a little hard to cut out that, that square. Uh, I think a Dremel tool might be best, and I have these um, uh, rotary tool heads I bought a while back for my Dremel tool and have not used yet. So I'm going to give one of those a try. I've taken it out already, put it in my Dremel, and I'm going to try to not screw this project up. Well, I've cut the first line, not perfectly straight, but it gave me a guide to where I can line up and draw the lines on this side, and I think I can get straighter lines with a jigsaw, so that's what I'm going to use now. Well, with some very careful cuts, I cut it just right and got that little screen in there. So now I can have words scrolling across the screen uh, while she's playing games. Or so I thought. I've actually completely screwed up. So originally I screwed, drilled holes from the back to know where to cut out this, this square for the screen. This is one of the holes up there. I was supposed to cut this way, not this way. It's now in the way of the joystick. Let's see what I can do about that. Well this just goes to show, no matter how hard you think you're trying, if you start getting tired you're going to start messing up which means it's about time for me to stop for today. But you can see that the joystick is going to be in the way of that screen, or the screen's going to be in the way of the joystick. As I said, mm, with this controller, it seems like most games are going to have to program it anyway, so I think my best option is just to turn the joystick this way, and then program it for games in that style. Uh, so, yeah, and that's what I'm going to have to do, uh, besides scrapping this and starting all over again. You know, we're trying to patch up that hole, which just isn't going to happen. Uh, so actually, probably this way probably be best. So I, I didn't need to cut that piece off the joystick. Uh, but if it's perfectly like that, and still have room for our controller board here, um, and I want to put in uh, ESP8266 for this screen, uh, which might fit right there. If not, I can put it over there and just run the wires to it. So or down here, it doesn't really matter, there's plenty of room for that sort of thing, or, or, or actually right up there I could mount it. Anyway, that's it for this week. Uh, be sure to check out my Patreon page and my website. The links are in the description. I thank you for watching, I hope you have a great day, and be sure to subscribe so you can see how I mess up next week. Thanks, and have a great day.